What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is John. Today we're gonna to be doing a camera comparison between our best buy of 2019, the Google Pixel 3a, which you can pick up for about $399, and the iPhone XR, which you can pick up at retail for about $749. Both are fantastic smartphones, and both have very similar software camera features that I want to explore and compare so that when you make your next purchase, you make a smart one. So uh, let's get right down to it. Both cameras use utilize software features and algorithms like port for portrait mode. Uh, the Google Pixel 3a definitely uses a lot of those software features for night mode and for reducing noise and for creating more contrast overall. And you'll definitely notice that. The iPhone XR uses its neural processing engine and software algorithms to detect faces and subject matters so it can create accurate background blur. What's really cool, and I learned this from a video done by Rene Ritchie, another YouTuber, uh, he was saying in his video that uh, Apple actually went out and emulated or simulated the different lenses at different focal lengths. So like if you have an f1.4 aperture lens or maybe an f4 aperture lens or an f3.5 aperture lens, when you use portrait mode and toggle back and forth between the apertures, they're meant to emulate uh, each respective lens that they tested out and uploaded onto the phone. Hard to explain, really cool. Uh, nonetheless, both cameras are 1.4 dense, that is pixel wise. The Google Pixel 3a is a 28 millimeter lens and you'll definitely see that in the, in the photos here. They're cropped in a little bit more. The iPhone XR is a 26 millimeter lens, uh, takes beautiful photos. We're gonna, I'm, I, will, I won't, say until the end which phone I think is the better camera phone. Uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and look at some of these pictures here. So um, one of the main features that the iPhone was touting uh, at its iPhone launch event last year was the ability to pick up shadows and things like that. And the iPhone XR really does a good job of it picking up shadows as you can see uh, the shadows from the staircase, they wrap around, and it really does a good job of highlighting those shadows and making them contrasty looking. The Google Pixel 3a does a pretty good job as well, but I think it's a little bit more focused on color, as where the iPhone XR is a little bit more focused on those shadows and creating a more balanced composition. The Google Pixel 3a, I think, is really looking at maintaining a more balanced composition in terms of color. This next photo I took, is um, off, off this deck area overlooking the lake in our neighborhood. It was very early in the morning this morning, the sun was coming up. Uh, the iPhone XR, very natural looking, but the Google Pixel 3a, a little bit more cropped in as you can tell, there's a little bit more railing in the iPhone XR when compared to the Google Pixel 3a. The Google Pixel 3a just looks so colorful and sharp. Uh, there's actually like this light pole to my right, you guys can't see it, but you can actually see them uh, in the background there across the lake. Well, one of those light poles, I'm actually standing right next to right next to it. And the iPhone XR with its 26 millimeter lens is really letting in all that light. The Google Pixel 3a on the other hand is not. It's sort of cropping it out. The, it's focusing in on the main subject, which is the sunrise and the reflections off the lake. And it really balances that light out, that extra light out, and makes the image a little bit more contrasty and a little bit more interesting, I think. Both do a great job of picking up the reflections in the lake, and they both do a great job, I think, of depicting uh, color as best they can. Both are different, but they both do make the attempt to depict color the best they can. Uh, I've got some more photos of like the gazebo around the lake. Uh, like I said before, both make an attempt to depict colors accurately. They both, I really like to do zoomed in photography quite a bit. So I think this is a really good demonstration of the focal lengths and how the cameras look when you're zoomed all the way in. So I believe it's 10 times zoom on both phones. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, 
I think the Google Pixel 3a does a little bit better of a job at noise reduction, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I really like the graininess of the iPhone XR. It uh, makes it almost look painterly. And um, yeah, it, if you really zoom in on a subject with the iPhone XR and like a really pretty flower or something like that, you can really make it look splotchy and painterly and almost like impressionist style. I really love that. Uh, the Google Pixel 3a tries really hard to take out noise and um, grain and that type of stuff. And the iPhone just does and it lets it fly. And I like that, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so I've got a picture here. I was taking a walk on the beach with my dad one morning. It's just something we like to do. Uh, beautiful morning, uh, a little bit overcast, but nonetheless, good conditions for taking photography. There's always good conditions for taking photography. So here is a sea turtle nest. I, my hand may have been shaky a little bit with the Google Pixel 3a, but the Google Pixel 3a just looks uh, a little bit more contrasty, but I think the colors are a little bit more accurate. They're a little bit brighter on the iPhone XR. And, but as you can tell, that, that focal length difference really allows you to see a lot more with the iPhone XR. So that beautiful sea turtle nest that you cannot touch that are absolutely, you must stay away from them and for good reason, uh, looks really a little bit better on the iPhone XR. But I will say that on the Google Pixel 3a, the background looks better. It looks sharper, it looks cleaner. And overall, I think both are very sharp and very crisp and clean, but I think the iPhone XR is just a little bit more focused in on the subject matter. And the subject matter here is the sea turtle nest sign and the uh, ropes keeping people out as where the Pixel 3a is more, I think, less focused on the sea turtle nest and more focused on the background. And that may have been my fault, but uh, any, nonetheless, you can see that. Okay, so here is sort of an artsy photo. This one is of the pier. Uh, just, you know, I absolutely adore this photo on the Google Pixel 3a, the sunflowers or the lilies or whatever they are, uh, really pop and the lines just look so much darker and more intense on the Google Pixel 3a. Uh, the sky looks a little bit more intense and it just overall, the lines in the photo are intense and they're, and they're quick. And uh, I think a more contrasty, punchy photo like you get on the Google Pixel 3a makes this photo look better. Uh, this photo of this man, I really like on the iPhone XR better. Uh, it's a more lively photo. It's a more lively looking photo on the iPhone XR. It's brighter, it's clearer. Uh, the Pixel 3a, it's just a little bit too dark for taking pictures of people. Um, and it's kind of a little bit unfortunate because taking photography of people is actually very intimate and almost actually very intimidating uh, feat, if you ask me, you know, stopping and taking a picture of this of this of this gentleman uh you know he could have turned around and said hey fuck you or something like that you know and that's just you don't want to upset people or piss people off in any way but he was very kind enough and kept walking uh nonetheless it's a great photo i think and it really shows you know beach life and you know fort myers life and this is how people you know live down here they go fishing and the guy's got his cooler his, he's got his bait tackle box and his fishing poles, and he's gonna go and fish off the pier this morning. But I think the photo just looks a little bit more lively on the iPhone XR. It's a little bit too dark on the Google Pixel 3a, and I think anytime you're trying to depict uh, subject matter, human subject matter, you definitely wanna go for a lighter photo. Okay, so when it comes to taking pictures of really cool stuff like we went to breakfast afterwards, usually we walk um, maybe four miles or so, and then uh, we go and eat breakfast and fill up. So I took a picture out front. This restaurant is called Yucatan. It's got uh, these totem poles outside, or I, I'm not sure what they're called, but uh, they're these really cool totem pole-esque uh, things. And the guy is, this 
mask is holding two uh, bottles of probably liquor and uh, it just looks much more fun and more exciting on the Google Pixel 3a. It just looks more punchy and you know, it looks like memorable. It looks like something memorable. And I think that's actually the big difference between the Google Pixel 3a and the iPhone 10R is photos on the Google Pixel 3a just look more memorable than they do on the iPhone 10R. The iPhone 10R um, just takes them how they are. No pun intended. Okay, so these next round of photos I took at a park, Lakes Park. Uh, again, the photos just look so much more memorable on the Google Pixel 3a. They look a little bit washed out on the iPhone XR, or at least this picture in particular looks a little bit washed out. Uh, just a picture of um, a, a triptych, or yeah, a triptych, right? This would be called considered a triptych, three paintings. Uh, it's sort of a monument here, uh, dedicated to whomever. I did not read it, I was wearing Sam. Anyway, it's a long story, I just didn't read it. I just wanted to take a picture of it. As you can see, it just looks so much more punchy and like lively than on the iPhone XR. But I will say, given the fact that it is like this monument, uh, monuments are really supposed to be not memorable and really something to be admired rather. And I think the iPhone XR does a better job at uh, admiring the monument instead of uh, depicting it as memorable. So that being said, the colors look better on the Google Pixel 3a, but I think the whole idea behind taking a picture of something like a, a monument or a memorial is a little bit um, more accurate on the iPhone XR. And that's kind of an abstract thing to say, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just kind of throw some of these other photos up for you guys. As you can see, they're just so contrasty on the Google Pixel 3a. Sometimes that contrasty, like I said, is unneeded. And, and the picture of that memorial that, uh, or it's not a memorial that uh, that monument that we just looked at is a good example of that. So this is a really accurate picture of this lake with the moon still out. Both look good on either phone. Uh, you know, it they, it speaks for themselves. It it's all this. Both phones are really good at taking pictures. Um, it's just such a matter of personal preference, really. Like if you're a photographer, this is a, a matter of personal preference. Like Google Pixel 3a, the rawness of iPhone XR or the contrasty, um, really com lively, live-like photos, memorable photos of the Google Pixel 3a. It's really up to the person making the purchase, really. So anyways, let's take a photo. Let's look at some photos using Night Sight. Night Sight on Google Pixel 3a is absolutely fantastic. Uh, photos look just crystal clear uh, as where the lighting in the iPhone XR, they look a little bit blown out. Anyways guys, that concludes this video, this camera comparison between our best buy of 2019, the Google Pixel 3a and the Apple iPhone XR. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.